Hello friends, welcome to the studio chemistry lecture again. In the last lecture, we have discussed about homotopic, enantiotopic, and diastereotopic atoms or groups. Today, we are going to discuss homotopic, enantiotopic, and diastereotopic phases. Suppose we have a molecule with the general structural formula like this where x is equal to oxygen, sulfur, substituted or unsubstituted nitrogen or substituted, partially substituted or unsubstituted carbon. R1, R2, R3 and R4 are hydrogen, alkyl or aryl groups. This means the compound is alkene, aldehyde, or ketone. The double bond has two phases for the attack by a reagent, top phase and bottom phase. If two products formed by the attack of a reagent from the top phase and bottom phase, are the same then the two phases are called homotopic if the two products formed by the attack of a reagent from top and bottom phases are enantiomers then these two phases are called enantiotopic and if two products formed by the attack of a reagent from top and bottom phases are diastereomers, then the two phases are called diastereotopic phases. Let's discuss these three types of phases with examples. First, we are going to discuss the examples of homotopic phases. Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a carbonyl compound. Carbonyl group of any aldehyde or ketone has the tendency to undergo nucleophilic addition reaction. To test whether a particular aldehyde or ketone has homotopic, enantiotopic or diastereotopic phases, select a source of nucleophile providing a nucleophilic group which is not already attached to the carbonyl carbon. In formaldehyde, there are two hydrogens attached to the carbonyl carbon. So, in this case, we will have to choose any reagent that provides a nucleophile other than hydride ion. So, in this case, we can choose NABD4 or any Grignard reagent. Suppose the reagent of our choice is NABD4. Attack of NABD4 from the top phase will give structure A while attack of NABD4 from the bottom phase will give structure B. Since structure A and B are the same, so the two phases of carbonyl double bond of formaldehyde are homotopic. Similarly, in the case of acetone, if the reagent of our choice is NABD4, attack from the top phase will give structure A, while attack from the bottom phase will give structure B. Since structure A and B are the same, so the two phases of acetone carbonyl are homotopic. Let's have the example of trans 2,5-dimethyl cyclopentanone. In this case too, let NABD4 be the reagent of our choice. Attack of NABD4 from top phase will give structure A 
while attack from the bottom face will give a structure B. If we rotate a structure B about this axis through 180 degrees, we will find that structure A and B are the same. So, the two faces of trans 2,5-dimethyl cyclopentanone carbonyl are homotopic. 2-methyl probe 1-ene In the case of alkene, always use epoxidation reaction as a test reaction for the determination of topicity. Epoxidation of 2-methyl probe 1-ene from the top face will give structure A while from the bottom face will give a structure B. Since structure A and B are the same, so the two faces of double bond of 2 methyl prop 1 in are homotopic. Cis 2 butene. Similarly, epoxidation of cis 2 butene from the top face will give a structure A while from the bottom face will give a structure B. If we rotate a structure B 180 degrees about this axis, we will find that structure A and B are the same. So, the two faces of the double bond of cis 2 butene are homotopic. Now, Come to the second point, enantiotopic phases. Let's take the example of acetaldehyde. If we allow it to react with NABD4, top phase attack will put deuterium above the plane, forcing oxygen going away from the plane and thus leading to the formation of a structure A. Bottom phase attack will put deuterium below the plane, forcing oxygen coming out of the plane and thus leading to the formation of a structure B. Structure A and B are chiral molecules. The absolute configuration of a structure A is S and that of a structure B is R. So, Structure A and B are enantiomers. If we rotate structure B 180 degrees about this axis and put it like this, we will also find that structure A and B are enantiomers. So, the two phases of carbonyl group in acetaldehyde are enantiotopic. Propene. If we allow to react with epoxidizing agents, top phase attack will put oxygen above the plane and thus leading to the formation of a structure A. Bottom phase attack will put oxygen below the plane and thus leading to the formation of a structure B. Structure A and B are chiral molecules with one chiral center. The absolute configuration of structure A is S and that of structure B is R. So, structure A and B are enantiomers. If we rotate structure B 180 degrees about this axis and put it like this, we can also find that structure A and B are non-superimposable mirror images of each other and thus enantiomers. So, the two phases of double bond in propene are enantiotopic. Let's take the example of trans 2-butene. As usual, Use epoxidation reaction as a test reaction. 
Attack of oxygen from the top face will lead to the formation of a structure A, while that of bottom face will lead to the formation of a structure B. A structure A and B are chiral molecules. The absolute configurations of chiral centers in a structure A are R and R. The absolute configurations of chiral centers in a structure B are S and S. So, a structure B with opposite configurations on each chiral center is the enantiomer of a structure A. If you rotate a structure B 180 degrees about this axis and put it like this, you can also find that structure A and B are non-superimposable mirror images of each other and thus enantiomers. So, the two faces of alkene in trans-tubutene are enantiotopic diastereotopic phases. Suppose we have R3-phenyl-2-butanone and we have to find whether the two phases of the carbonyl double bond are homo, enantio or diastereotopic. If we allow it to react with NABD4, top phase attack will put deuterium above the plane, forcing oxygen going away from the plane and thus leading to the formation of a structure A. Bottom phase attack will put deuterium below the plane, forcing oxygen coming out of the plane and thus leading to the formation of a structure B. A structure A and B are not mirror images of each other and thus diastereomers. You can also find the relation between structure A and B by determining absolute configurations. The absolute configurations in structure A are 2R and 3R. The absolute configurations in structure B are 2R and 3S. Hence, structure A and B are diastereomers. So, the two phases of carbonyl group in R3-phenyl-2-butanone are diastereotopic. Cis-2,5-dimethyl-cyclopentanone. In this case too, if we allow it to react with NABD4, top phase attack will put deuterium above the plane, forcing oxygen going away from the plane and thus leading to the formation of structure A. Bottom phase attack will put deuterium below the plane, forcing oxygen coming out of the plane and thus leading to the formation of structure B. We can see that structure A and B are not mirror images and thus diastereomers. We can also find the relation between structure A and B by determining absolute configurations. The absolute configuration of a structure A are 2R and 5S. So, the carbon bearing deuterium will be a pseudo chiral center with absolute configuration a small r. Compound B has configurations 2R, 5S, and a small s. Thus, structure A and B with difference in configuration only at one chiral center are diastereomers. So, the two phases of carbonyl group in cis-2,5-dimethylcyclohexanone are diastereotopic. 4 tert cyclohexanone If we allow it to react with NABD4, Top phase attack, that is axial attack, will put deuterium axial, forcing oxygen to be equatorial and thus leading to the formation of a structure A. Bottom phase attack, that is equatorial attack, will put deuterium equatorial, 
forcing oxygen to be axial and thus leading to the formation of structure B. We can see that structure A and B are not mirror images of each other and thus diastereomers. So, the two faces of carbonyl group in tartbutyl 4 tartbutyl cyclohexanone are diastereotomic. 2 Narbornenone. If we allow it to react with NABD4, top face attack will put deuterium exo, forcing oxygen to be endo and thus leading to the formation of structure A. Bottom face attack will put deuterium endo, forcing oxygen to be exo and thus leading to the formation of structure B. We can see that structure A and B are not mirror images of each other and thus diastereomers. So, the two faces of carbonyl group in 2 narbornenone are diastereotopic. Or cyclohex 2 enol. If we allow it to react with epoxidizing agent, top face attack will put oxygen above the plane thus leading to the formation of structure A. Bottom face attack will put oxygen below the plane and thus leading to the formation of structure B. We can see that structure A and B are not mirror images of each other and thus diastereomers. So, the two faces of alkene in are cyclohex 2 enol are diastereotopic. Similarly, in narbornin, if we allow it to react with epoxidizing agent, top face attack will lead to the formation of exo product A and bottom face attack will lead to the formation of endo product B. Since product A and B are diastereomers, so the two faces of alkenes in narbornin are diastereotopic.